Hello, my fans, sneak peepers, and curious friends. I'm difficult and demanding. If you want to know my real name, then hold still, and I might bring your wish to fruition. Before I begin, you can find this show in iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, SoundCloud, Blueberry, Google Play Music, TuneIn, YouTube, and Stitcher. Now, unlike the other people in your life, I actually care about what you think, what you don't think, and what you try not to think about. Welcome to the Difficult and Demanding Show. I'm real, uncensored, unconventional, and shoot straight between the eyes. My show is outrageously honest with a keenly witty view into life. Yes, I said life. That's what we do every single day. We are living life, for some of us at least. I'm going to provide laughter, shock, while touching your inner being. Maybe your body if you're lucky. (laughs) Why do I call myself difficult and demanding? Well, first, because I can. Two, because I'm not supposed to. Three, this is the most important point. It only means something if I give life to it. So, I'm going to slowly unveil you to you and give you a new life to live. Difficult and demanding is going to liberate every part of your being and maybe your body. I, your host Tara, am keeping it authentic, intriguing, and provocative. If you have entered my world, then be honest with yourself about it. You want to be here, and you know I want you here. Hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you've had a wonderful week. So this is a very, very, very special episode. And it's special because it's number 100. It's been a long time getting to this number 100, but I'm patting myself on the ass right now. (laughs) Actually, I'm patting myself on my back and on my ass at the same time. But seriously, it's number 100 and it's a great milestone for me. So I thought I would let you all know if you didn't notice the number 100, hashtag 100 in front of this episode. I wanted to make sure that I highlighted that for you so you could imagine patting me on the ass. It will never happen. But I'm not here to kill your dreams, am I? (laughs) Actually, sometimes I do. Most times I do. But I kill those dreams to give you bigger, better dreams for yourself so you can feel happy to be alive. What do you think about that? So let's go ahead and let's get started. This episode is called Sorry as Hell. Yeah, Sorry as Hell. Now, where did I get this inspiration from? Well, I had a conversation. And this person was telling me how um, she's been dating this gentleman for over 10 years, I would say. and. They've been on again, off again, on again, and off again. Like, for me, I don't believe in that on again, off again shit. Either we're on or we're motherfucking off. Because if we're off, we're off for a goddamn reason. And you know what? Let's just keep that shit off. But hey, I digress. Let's get back on track, okay? So she's been in this relationship with this guy for over 10 years. I'm thinking maybe 15 years, okay? Just work with me here. And the reason why she keeps breaking up with him is because he's not able to commit. He's not able to make her a priority. Um, the gist of it is when it's on is on, when it's off is off. But she feels not appreciated. Um, she feels like he is not hitting the spot, the G spot of their relationship. He's every other motherfucking place but the spot. That's just going to make her head explode with happiness to be with this gentleman. Okay. 
So she told me that she is feeling very happy and light and radiant, and that she call blocked his fucking ass, and it just made her feel so awesome. And then he kept sending her emails, and she's thinking, "What the." Fuck? Fuck! He didn't get the point when he could not leave me a voicemail, and now this son of a bitch is sending me stalker emails, right? So then she responds to one of his many, many, many emails, and she tells him, "Look, bruh, we're done. We're off." Now his ass is thinking, "Bitch, please! I've been there. I've heard that." Your voluptuous ass is going to come back to me again because that is what you always do. So let's stop with the fucking bullshit and just come back to me and take me back. Now that's what he's thinking. She's thinking, "Fuck you, I'm done. I don't want it anymore." He's thinking, "You want this shit? You know you want it. You want it? Come and get it. Matter of fact, don't come and get it. I'm gonna bring that shit to you." So what he does is that he comes to her home. And he's knocking on her door incessantly for twenty minutes. The door is not open for his ass, so he decides to leave a bouquet of flowers and some coffee at her front door because she did not open the door. When she gets back home, because she happens not to be at home, and her daughter was actually home. When she gets back home, she finds the bouquet of flowers. And the coffee that he left for her, and she's thinking in her mind and heart, "Oh, this is so sweet. This is so kind of him. This is what he normally does." Dot dot dot. Blah blah blah. Wah wah wah. Okay, so she's telling me this, and she says, "You know, I'm done. I had enough." He was supposed to come to my house after he closed his restaurant. Instead of coming to see me like he promised me, he went to his accountant instead. And you know, when I'm asleep, he's awake, and when he's asleep, I'm awake. And it's like, why are we together? Because we're never really together. We're not getting any quality time. My life is just passing me by. That's what she's saying on one side of her fucking face. The other side of her fucking face, she's saying. I don't have anything bad to say about him. He is a wonderful guy, you know. I can only say great things about him, and he's just the sweetest thing ever. So I'm listening to this conversation. It's like a fucking ping pong match going on in my head, and I'm saying, okay, okay. So you don't have anything to say bad about him. He is a wonderful guy, and you care about him very deeply. That's on one hand. On the other hand, he is not putting you first. He cannot give you quality time. He's not making time for you, and the only time he seems to do something of value is when you want to kick his fucking punk bitch to the curb. I said, okay. Now I'm not saying any of this because I've learned to shut the fuck up. Did you hear me? S T F U. Yes, I shut the fuck up. You cannot tell someone some shit that they're not ready to hear. You cannot show someone some shit that they're not ready to see. Here's another pearl of wisdom for you people: if you do not know, if you are trying to enlighten someone, awaken them on any motherfucking level that you can do so, and you're trying to tell them some shit that they are not ready to hear, or you're trying to show them some stuff that they're not ready to see, you might as well just shoot your fucking ass in the head because you're wasting your goddamn time and their time also. And all you're going to do is create discord and create strife between you and that person. You're also going to get resentment and anger within yourself because you're thinking, "What the fuck? I can see this shit. A blind man can see this shit. Why can't you see this shit?" And then you're still trying to help the person that you care for and friend to help them see you can do better, you can have better. But it's a it's a moot, 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 moot point. What that means is it's irrelevant. It's a non-factor. Don't waste your time. So back to me. I am shutting the fuck up. I'm just listening. So she says, "You know, he's always so sorry. He's always so sorry. And when he's so sorry, I can't help but forgive him. He does the sweetest things. The shit doesn't last very long. It used to last weeks, 
It used to last months. Now, when he's sorry, the shit probably lasts about a day or two and then he goes back to normal. But when he's sorry, he's so, so, so sorry. He's so sorry. I'm thinking his ass is goddamn sorry. But the question is, who's the sorry motherfucker here? Who's the sorry one here? Who is sorry as hell? Now, y'all thinking, difficult and demanding, why are you being so harsh? I'm not being harsh. I'm being truthful here. Because I don't want you to think I haven't done this stupid ass shit. Because I have. I have. And the question I'm asking is why the fuck would anyone do that shit? Why? Why? Who in this equation is sorry as hell? Is it the person who's playing you like a goddamn fiddle? Or is it your punk bitch ass for falling for that shit? Tell me who's sorry as hell. Who is the sorry motherfucker in this equation? Is it the person who's unhappy? Or is it the person who's doing whatever the fuck they want and they're going to keep doing because you keep falling for the fucking clown ass? Tell me who the sorry motherfucker here is. Who's sorry? I've hit a nerve. And I've given you a new perspective. We like to sit back here and think, oh, he or she, they feel so bad. They feel so sorry. They know. They understand. They won't do it again. I mean a lot to them. And then you forgive them and they turn around and do the same shit again. It's like a merry-go-round with the fucking roller coaster. Those two, a merry-go-round and a goddamn roller coaster had a baby and this is your life. They fuck up. They feel remorse. So you think they apologize. You forgive them. Things are good for whatever amount of time. And then the shit starts over again, over again, over again. So I asked you a question. Who's the sorry motherfucker here? Who's sorry as hell? Is it the person who keeps fucking up in your eyes? Or is it your motherfucking ass who keep falling for that shit? Who's sorry? Who's the real sorry one? Because I hate to break it to you. Actually, no, I don't hate to break it to you. I like to tell the truth because I believe with the truth. Knowledge is power. And when you have knowledge, you make boss fucking moves. You take your power back. You start moving and shaking things. That's what I believe. Why be stupid when you can be smart? So I asked you, who's the sorry motherfucker in this equation? Because there is someone and the person who's sorry as hell is not the one who's evident, is not the one that you see, is not the one that you think. No, it's you. You got a person who has you and the palm of their ass. (laughs) That made no sense what I just said, but I just combined two different things. So work with me here. They have you in the palm of your hands. Or maybe they have their foot up your ass. Either way, they control you. They own you. When they want to treat you good, they'll treat you good. When they want to show you they don't give a fuck, they're going to show you they don't give a fuck. They want to do things on their time, on their terms. And they know exactly what to tell you, what to show you. To make you do what they want you to do. What do you think about that? Huh? What do you think about that? You think this motherfucker is stupid? No. They're very, 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 very very smart. They're making you think you have the reins. But all they're doing is just playing games with you. Because they can play games with you. What do you think about that? They fuck up. They buy flowers. They buy coffee. They tell you some sorry ass shit. And you fall for it like a sucker. And then you think, now they see. Now they know. They've seen the light. They understand. They will not do it again. Until they do that shit again. And it's the same thing over and over and over again. And your emotions are up, then they're down, then they're up, then they're down. You're happy, 
You're sad and angry. You're happy. You're sad and angry. You're happy. You're sad and angry. Does it sound familiar? One minute you want to choke the motherfucker. The next minute you want to hug him. The next minute you want to kick them in their fucking ass. The next minute you're sucking their fucking dick. The next minute you're on a vacation with them. The next minute you have their face, your face shoved in her fucking pussy. Whatever it is that you do, you can fill in the blanks. But you catch my point. It's a cycle. It's a nasty, toxic cycle. Sorry as hell. You never thought about it this way. You think they're just stupid. You think they're immature. You think their priorities are wrong. You think you can teach them. You think you can show them. The fact is, they're playing you. They're playing you. Because anyone who cared about you, they wouldn't hurt you. And if they did hurt you by accident, they would fix that shit and they wouldn't do it again. And they would work very, very hard not to do that shit again. So I'm asking you, who's the sorry motherfucker here? Who's sorry as hell? Is it the person who's bringing the coffee and the bouquet of flowers? Or is it the motherfucker who's taking the coffee and bouquet of flowers? Now, if you were me, if it was me, I would take that fucking coffee and bouquet of flowers and I would slam that goddamn floor, door in your goddamn face. We would be done. We would be done. Because when you're engaging in type of shit like this, it never ends. It just gets worse and worse and worse over time. Why do we allow this bullshit? What is it with being alone? Matter of fact, it's not even being alone. Fuck being alone. Being single. Being alone and being single are two different things. Being single is one thing. Being alone is one thing. And being lonely is another motherfucking thing. And we like to roll all those together. They're different. Now, in your head, you may think they're the same, but you can be single and not feel alone. You can be alone and not feel motherfucking lonely. I've confused you. Let's try this shit again. Let's try it again. Keep up with me. We believe, most of us, that being single means you're alone. And when you're alone, it naturally implies that you're lonely, right? But no, that's not true. It's some bullshit that you've been taught or you came up with yourself. I'm going to burst your cherry on that shit. Let's try this. Just because you're single does not mean you feel alone. And just because you happen to be alone doesn't mean you're necessarily lonely or need to feel lonely. What do you think about that? Some new age shit for y'all. Why do you think you listen to me? Because I'm going to give you a different perspective. We're going to break this fucking shit that we seem to think is true, but it's not true. It's not true. What we think and believe is not true. It's all fucking farce. It's fiction. It's not real. That is why we are so scared of being single. And that is why we continue to allow ourselves to be played like fucking clowns over and over again by people who do not appreciate us. People who really don't care about us. All because we think if we're single... It's a fucking disease. How's being single a goddamn disease? You think someone can smell that you're alone? Well, if you're fucking desperate and pitiful, yes. But we can fix that. It's all a matter of changing your perspective, changing your point of view, changing your belief system. Single does not mean alone. And alone does not mean motherfucking lonely. Now me, I would rather be a fucking alone and goddamn lonely than deal with a sorry motherfucker who cannot appreciate a fucking goddess and queen in his face. What do you think about that? Someone continuously fucks up, been with you for years. And they bring you fucking flowers and fucking coffee, flowers and coffee, flowers and coffee. Now, y'all may say, look, you think you're too good, difficult to manage. You did. You think too much of yourself. If I don't think a lot of myself, who the fuck will? I set my standards. I set my standards. I set my worth. If I'm letting someone who brings me fucking flowers and coffee after we've been together for years, I'm telling you my value, I'm depreciating my value. No one wants a depreciating asset. No. It starts with you first. 
And how many times you allow that fool to bring you coffee and fucking flowers? Come on now. We get so caught up in our emotions and our fears and our insecurities that we don't see shit for what it fucking is. We don't see it for what it is. We have people pulling all kinds of stunts, trying to confuse us. You got someone telling you that they love you. But on New Year's Eve, instead of spending it with you, they want to go spend it with their fucking friends. You bought sh- expensive champagne, chocolate covered strawberries. You guys are going to have a fucking nighttime goddamn picnic on New Year's Eve and bring it in with fucking fireworks on all many different levels. But the person you're with, they don't want to spend it with you after all taking all this effort and, and planning this romantic evening. No, they want to go spend New Year's Eve with their friends and their friends' parents and leave you to fucking home. And they're sitting here telling you, well, I invited you. You can come if you want. But since you don't want to come, I'm going to fuck out. How much of a sign does it take for you, me, and everyone to see that a person doesn't give a fuck about you? Because they told you they love you. I love you, but I'm going out with my friends. We can't fall for that shit. We can't fall for it. If words and actions do not match, there's a problem. When one plus one does not equal two, we got a problem. When you're trying to tell me that one plus one equals three, that means there's a lie in that bitch. Do you understand? I'll repeat it again. Most of us know that one plus one equals two, right? Two. If someone is coming to you and telling you that one plus one equals three. There is a lie in that fucking bitch. Do you understand? Do you understand? We spend many months, years in relationships with people who are telling us one plus one equals three. And we don't pick up on it. Because they do some good sweet things to cover up most of the bullshit that they're perpetrating. Yeah. All because we have fears about being single, about if there's something better. How many times have I told you, if you found one, you'll find another one. You'll find another one. There's another one, another one, another one, another one. There's an endless supply of dick and pussies, whatever it is you like. If you like them both, you can have that. You got double the quantity. There's always someone else where you're saying, well, they may not be right. They may not check all these boxes. They may check some other boxes that you never knew existed that will blow your goddamn brain. But when you steady dealing with peasants and fucking losers, you will never know that there's a king or queen waiting for you. You will never know. Why settle? Why settle? You do know you deserve more. You do know that you can have more. But how are you going to receive if your hand is closed? If you're hungry, how are you going to be fed if your mouth is closed? You think that's the best? There's always better. There's always better. But you got to know where to look. And you got to know how to look. And you got to see bullshit when it's there. Because people nowadays, they like to trick you. They like to play games. They try to make you think that black is white and white is black. But that's where you got to have your own brain, your own mind. You have to take a step back from what the fuck is going on. Because people are running so many games on us. So many games. And they're really just exploiting you and I. For their own purpose, for their own benefit, when it suits them, when it's convenient for them. Now, I've told you before, you're on this earth for a purpose. And your purpose is not to be a fucking fool for a fucker who does not appreciate you. Do you understand? And even if they appreciated you in the beginning, if they still don't appreciate you, you need to go. My last episode, I said it is right until it feels wrong. Because when you're. Frustrated, sad, disappointed, feeling 
exposed, you're feeling disrespected, misunderstood. Those are emotions that are trying to tell you a fool ass something. And they're trying to tell you that something is wrong. But instead of listening to you, you want to listen to the son of the bitch, son of a bitch who's making the bouquet of flowers and the goddamn um, coffee. Or you're listening to the chick who's wearing a fucking thong in your goddamn face and smiling, telling you some bunch of bullshit. If the words and the actions don't match, why are we wasting our time? Why do we continually waste our time? Sorry as hell. Anyone who's truly sorry, they wouldn't keep doing it. They wouldn't keep hurting you. They hurt you because you let them. They fool you because you let them. You give your power away. You feed into your fears. You feed into your insecurities. And you know what these people do? They blow that shit up. Listen to what I said. People who are constantly apologizing to you, telling you you're sorry every time you are attempting to get away from them, attempting to break the cycle, attempting to leave. All they're doing is exploiting, expanding, increasing the intensity of your fears and insecurities. And the longer you are in those types of situations, the harder it is for you to get out because you don't know light or right from wrong. You don't know left from right. You don't know. You're confused. You lose your clarity. You lose your sense of purpose. You lose your internal guide because you're listening to someone who truly does not give a fuck about you. Now, I want to go back to something this woman said to me. She says, I don't have one bad thing to say about this person. He's a great guy. I can't say one bad thing about him. He's sweet. He's da 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 da. But I don't want to be with him. That's what she said. I want to hone in on this. Very, very, very keenly. I want to hone in on this. Because this is where we get confused. Very much so. We see a person. They check all of these boxes. That's in our head about what's important. They are essentially a good person. And if you live the number of years on this earth, you can distinguish between good and bad. Now, most people, we're not perfect. We're not close to perfect. But you got a general sense of what's good and what's bad. Now, she said this guy, I don't have one bad thing to say about him. He's a good man. You got a man who's good. Who's making a woman that's good feel bad. Listen to what I said. You have a quote unquote good man making a quote unquote good woman feel bad. And she's allowing this to continue to perpetrate. What is my point? You can have a good man or a good woman. But they can be wrong for you. They could be bad for you. We automatically assume just because someone appears good and is essentially inherently good. That that means they're good for you. No. That's why I said in my last episode, it's right until it feels wrong. Just because something checks a whole bunch of boxes does not mean it's good for you. You can't put kerosene and fire together and not get an explosion or humongous fire. You have to have the right right combination of energy of people to come together. We stay in marriages. We start businesses. We have careers. Um, we have children with people who check a whole bunch of boxes, but when you put you two together, that's a fucking fire hazard. That's an earthquake getting ready to happen. That's a tsunami. Just because something looks good doesn't mean it's good for you or your life. It's a big mistake that we make. Not everything mixes together. Oil and water does not mix. 
They are great things that we need in our life, but they don't go together. And this man and woman that I'm talking about, they are oil and water. Now, oil and water won't start a fire, but two people coming together with the wrong characteristics, that shit can be explosive. It can be very toxic. What do I want you to learn from this? Just because it looks good, it really doesn't mean it's good for you. And the best measurement, the best way for you to see that is by how you feel. Does this person help you feel good? Now, I'm not saying this person is responsible for your happiness. No, you are. But do they add real value to your life? Or are they just taking? Are they just taking up space and wasting your goddamn time? Sorry as hell. No, I hate to break it to you. You're the sorry motherfucker here. We're the sorry motherfuckers here. For taking and accepting apologies from people over and over and over again on the same shit over and and over and over again. We do not have to accept this. We don't have to tolerate that. Just because they have the right family background, the right career, the right education, the right zip code, the right car, the right friends, the right, the right everything in your mind, that motherfucker can be wrong for you on so many levels. And I'm talking about the levels that really count, which is mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. We can fix a lot of shit on the outside. But if you're miserable on the inside, why does it matter? It doesn't matter. Why do you want to be in bed next to someone who can't see you for the gem that you are? How priceless that you are. Why do you want to be waiting at home for someone who gives a fuck, more, cares more about their friends than they do about you and your feelings? Why is that okay? Wouldn't you rather be single and at peace and happy than sitting at home waiting for a motherfucker who really doesn't give a fuck about you? You can be single and happy or committed and fucking miserable. And we constantly choose being committed and fucking miserable. So I'm asking you, who's sorry? Who's sorry as hell? It's the person who's living life on their own terms and getting what they want and making you look like a fucking monkey fool. Are they the sorry ones? Are you the sorry ones for falling for their shit, falling for their circus show, their one man, one woman circus act? I hate to break it to you. You're the sorry one. And you can stop being sorry by realizing the patterns and seeing what's going on around you. You're being played and you're allowing yourself to be played. And each time you accept the stupid ass apology, you're devaluing yourself. You're telling that person, I really don't give a fuck about me. And I know you don't give a fuck about me. So shit, it works. Treat me like trash because I already feel like trash. And I think I'm trash. And the day you decide that you're not trash and you kick, That woman or man kick them out, kick them out of your life, your value will increase again. Now, do you have the courage to see your full worth? Only you will know that. What do I want you to remember? It's right until it feels fucking wrong. That's first. Go listen to episode 99 from Difficult and Demanding. Number two. A person can check all the boxes on your list and still be a bad person for you. They may be a great person, but they're not the right person for you. Number three, just because you let someone in your life, you don't have to let that motherfucker stay in your life. You don't owe them shit. Your loyalty lies with you. Four, Just because no one understands your decision and they say this person's great, 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 it doesn't mean shit. If it doesn't feel right for you, it's not right for you. Five, being single does not mean you have to be alone and does not mean you're lonely. 
Stop letting fear rule and dictate our life. I'm saying you deserve more. I'm saying you can have more. Go get it. And you keep trying until you get it. It doesn't matter how many people you go through. They call you a slut. They call you a hoe. They call you a jiggle. I, fuck, caring, fuck caring about what everybody else thinks. When you're happy, I'm happy. When you're not happy, I'm unhappy. And when I'm unhappy, we got a motherfucking problem. So I'm telling you, we got a problem. And I need you to go get happy. I need you to bring the people, the places, and things into your life that brings you the most joy. Not the motherfucker who's bringing you Starbucks coffee and some goddamn flowers. Not that shit. And stop letting people bring us this stupid ass shit. People who value Value you will bring you the fucking moon and stars. And that is a metaphor because everyone earns things differently. But they will put a lot more thought and time into what they're going to bring to you. And if a person is apologizing to you for the same shit over and over again, guys, you got to get a clue. Get a goddamn clue. You can't get what's truly right for you if you have trash obstacles blocking the way. I'm asking all of you to clear your goddamn path. Make way, make space to take out the fucking darkness in your life and bring some light into your life. Bring people who are going to put smiles on your face that are constantly disappointing you. Not constantly disappointing you. You're saying, well, you expect too much. You need to expect fucking more. Do you understand? Expect more. Who taught you to expect less? Expect less. You aiming low in life? You're aiming low and you're telling me I need to aim low. No, no, no. You need to aim motherfucking high. No one aims low in life. You aim low. I told you you receive less than low. You got to aim high. Fake it till you make it. Believe it until you see it. I don't give a fuck what you tell yourself. But this shit that we're doing, it's wrong. I don't care if you've invested five weeks, five years or 55 years. If you don't feel good. Put that motherfucker to the side. And if you're worried about how attractive you are, you need to start getting your hotness factor up. That's what I said. Be proactive in this bitch. There's always someone else. But no one's attracted to one who is dark, heavy, negative. You got to be confident. Even if you don't think you're the most attractive person in the world, you can have a beautiful aura, a beautiful energy, a beautiful personality about yourself. And you'll be amazed by the types of people you attract. But if you're feeling fuck all. Because you're sorry as hell. You're not going to get much. You're going to get how you feel. You're going to attract what you feel. So I'm telling you. Stop accepting those sorry ass apologies. People who care for you. They don't apologize. They fix the problem. Apologies are bullshit. I don't fuck with apologies. Don't come to me with a sorry ass motherfucking apology. Fix the problem and let's be done with it. And I don't want to discuss it again. Apologies are lame. Apologies are weak. Apologies make the person who is giving the apology feel better. I'm not here to make you feel better. I'm here to make sure I feel better. And if we all take the onus, the ownership of our own happiness and stop swallowing fucking shit. We can be happier people in life. So, what have you learned? Who the hell knows? Only you know. I've given you some pearls of wisdom. You can do with it what you want. But the next time you're sitting there talking to one of your girlfriends or your male friends and you're telling them how sorry she is, how sorry he is, what you need to be talking about is how sorry your motherfucking ass is. How sorry you are. Because if you're having the same conversation about the same fucker in your life, doing the same shit over and over again, I hate to break it to you. Actually, I love to break it to you. You're really the sorry as hell, motherfucker. You are sorry as hell. You're sorry as hell. And I don't care if I've offended you because I'm telling you the truth. We like to focus on others. No, no, no. Focus on a damn self. Focus on yourself. So. This is all I have for you this week. Hashtag 100. I suggest 
you get yourself as close to 100% happiness as possible and stop settling for trash and take out the fucking trash and claim your rightful place, your rightful space, your rightful happiness, your rightful peace of mind. Claim that shit. No one's going to give it to you. You got to claim it. Stake your fucking claim and only deal with people who can meet your goddamn terms. And when they cannot meet your terms, you thank them for their efforts and you send them on their way. Do you understand? Until the next time. Are you disappointed this has come to an end? Well, it doesn't have to. Reach out and follow me on Instagram at Difficult and Demanding and let me know what you think about this episode and my show. Episode 101 will be here the week of July 27, 2020 from Difficult and Demanding.